is this relationship. That's the, that's the real problem. That's the magnificent problem. And the only one I know who, who uh, deals with it in depth um, uh, is the uh, um, sixth Aeneid of Plotinus, seven, the seventh, that's called six, what's called six, seven. And if I can introduce you to it, you'll find a magnificent study of this from uh, um, 21 to 42. Now, let me see if I can take it out of this obvious abstraction here. What is it he's trying to do? What he's trying to do is say, look here, given the fact that the idea of the good, or what we are now calling the most brilliant light of being, a magnificent transformative experience of divine luminosity. He has two problems. He wants to say how this can become a model for this. And he deals with that from 1 to 20. But he's, what's very interesting is how he can talk about the relationship between these two. Because uh, there are all kinds of interesting uh, um, descriptions of people who have had this divine luminosity. You know, it's overwhelmingly beautiful. And they see in the moment the nature of mind itself. Uh, they see there can't be anything more real than that because everything after that is in contrast to that and therefore we get the sense of the phenomenal universe. And in it there's a bliss that's exceedingly powerful and overwhelming in some sometimes. And it, it is for those who experience it an ultimate experience. But this is not an experience. An experience has a beginning, middle, and end. It is something that took place. This is not an experience. When, you, when someone who has had this hears of this, they get very upset. They're very upset. I've seen it many, many times. Because it's impossible to conceive from it that there could be anything higher, because nothing else can be higher. There can't be an experience higher than that. But then to deal with the possibility that maybe there's something that is not an experience that transcends this in both dignity and power, that's a very profound challenge to the person who is identified with that experience. Rightfully, you know, rightfully. Yes. Yes? Yes. We have to go back to what you erased there with the, the first circle that you had of the demiurge, yes. the mind of the demiurge, and then yes. the steps going up yes. to, to the brilliant light yeah. on top. Mm -hmm. I perceive that that brilliant light or that Buddhahood is something that is, has stepped up on top and outside of the mind of the demiurge. So I would relate what mm. you're saying mm. now, that the idea of the good is mm. likened to the imagination of the demiurge, because it, as you've drawn it out, that within that imagination was the beginning, the middle, and the end of the universe, and mm -hmm. that, would be, mm -hmm. that would be constantly present. Mm -hmm. And yet, mm -hmm. there is something, in my mm -hmm. perception, beyond that oh, sure. itself, which it seems to be the same relationship that you're talking about now. Yes, I just caution you about the word, using the word ima imagine, mm -hmm. because therefore it has no reality. You just imagine it. It has no reality. Yeah, when, when one imagines something, one isn't dealing with a reality. But the mark of that experience is that there can be nothing higher in respect to an experience of reality. Now, I think you might be saying, if I, if I grasp what you're saying, you're saying, but still it's in the mind of God, as it were, and what's in the mind of anything is going to be an idea or imagining something. Is, is that not correct? The I way you're reasoning? It's, it's outside of, of 
that particular mind that you had, that you had created. So being outside of that, it's, it's completely free from that continuous beginning, middle, and end mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. constantly, mm -hmm. almost mm -hmm. prison-like, that the universe will stay inside that beginning, middle, middle and end as long as it's inside the imagination of the yeah. okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, quite right. But in terms of, of their principles, in the life of Dr. Sutra, uh, there isn't anything else. There's nothing outside of mind. Right? There's nothing outside of mind. Mm -hmm. it, existence is nothing other than mind. All is mind. So therefore, there can't be anything that transcends it for this. And mind, or whatever is described here as mind, then in the final stage is described in this way, which is the highest stage of Buddhahood, just to bring us together. Yeah. Yes, please. Well, just to try to uh, grasp this, um, how similar or different is it from Bishop Barclay? Who seems to be um, saying that it's um, really the world is, is mine. Um, this, is a, this is a pure idealism. You're quite right. Absolutely. Yes, this is a pure idealism. Yes. Oh, yeah. This is, formally, classically, this is a pure idealism. Like Vakantra Sutra, as is, is we would class it in Western philosophy, is a pure idealism. And therefore, it belongs in the class of writing such as Bishop Barclay. Oh, yeah. Quite right. He would say everything is mind. Oh, yes. Everything is mind to God. Oh, yeah. 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 So, the idea requires a mind, then, right? No, it, that's, it's not that use of the word. It's, see, it, it's not the use of, See, we want to say this belongs in the class of concepts. thoughts as activities of a mind. Yeah, the word idea, this is one of the big problems in Greek philosophy, that uh, traditionally the people who've translated Plato, when they get to this word, uh, 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 idea, they just take I, D, E, A, idea, that's the way it is. Well, that's not quite fair. You have to explain what yeah, well, Why not translate it? Literally, it means to, to behold, to cease, to behold. It's a, therefore, there must be something in the, that man has a, that it is possible to turn about. In Plato, there's a turning about in the seventh book of the Republic, where you have to turn about, you have to turn from the world of becoming to the world of being, that turning about is very much like the power of Riti in the Lankvatatra Sutra, which is turning the mind away from the senses, same kind of thing. So this really, uh, just to, in classical thought, this really should be, I think, a better way of talking about it should be intellect, right, with a capital I, that ability of the mind to perceive, uh, and what it perceives, therefore, must be the intelligible, the intelligible, therefore, in, uh, in this system, therefore, would be being, right? Intellect, therefore, perceives the intelligible, the intelligible.